Hi again, it's Richard. Uh, next part of my electric par car project. Uh, done quite a bit of work over the last week or so. Haven't had much chance to do much filming because uh, I've been doing this late at night and obviously I ain't got a very good picture on my camera. So here goes. Um, collected a coupler that I was having made up um, a while ago. It's buried in here. I'll just see, this is a, it's a pulley that I've had put, in, put on that I described beforehand. I'm hoping that pulley there will be able to be used to maybe drive an alternator. I'm hoping to put on the end here and maybe get an um, alternator belt underneath the bottom of this cross member onto that pulley there. Hopefully drive my auxiliary battery, the 12 volt battery for the uh, lights, controls, power steering and vacuum pump that will be running. <coughs> uh, since I received that about a week ago, what I've managed to do is to position the motor on the bottom plate here. Try and get a bit more light on here for you. Um, basically I managed to position the motor, get it all nice and straight as far as I can tell. There you go. And um, basically, I managed to get the motor set up and the gearbox in the engine bay um, a couple of evenings ago and then pop the drive shaft back in again. Uh, seemingly, everything seems to be okay. Uh, had a go at doing the first sort of uncontrolled power run yesterday, just to sort of try and get the wheels moving, which worked okay. I had the passenger side jacked up and the wheel goes around, which I'll demonstrate to you in a minute but um, couldn't quite understand why the driver's side wheel wouldn't go around, even for now on the fact that there was a diff in the middle of the two. So I came out this evening and jacked up the driver's side, uh, left the passenger side wheel on the ground, therefore the only wheel that should turn should be the driver's side, and it doesn't appear to turn. So I think I might have um, somehow damaged the gearbox in between the times that I sort of tucked it around, had a bit of trouble getting the driver's side drive shaft back in, so maybe I've uh, knocked something out of alignment there somehow. So there you go, I might need a new gearbox, which is a bit of a disappointment, although the, um, the whole setup's got to come out later on to be cleaned up and painted. It does mean that I've obviously um, wasn't going to do all that at the end uh, after getting everything else fitted, but obviously if I want to get any motion now, I'm going to be a bit knackered because um, just leaving it on the ground, uh, it looks like the differential's gone wrong, and so therefore when both wheels are on the ground, the car doesn't move. So at the moment, uh, I'll be looking around for another... Rover the same as this. I've got my arm on already. Got to go and um, chat up the owner, see if I can have any success with them. <clears throat> but here goes. I've got this wheel off the ground. As you can see, just about clearing the ground. I've got a reasonably good 12 volt battery off a Volvo I got rid of a few months ago. Nice big pair of jump leads, one on the bottom, one on the top. It will sound a bit noisy because there's no oil in the gearbox and also there's no mount underneath this end of the the plate i've just got my other jack underneath it at the moment so what should happen if i uh put one of these battery leads on we should actually see in a minute or hear you'll hear a sound and then hopefully we'll see a wheel moving yeah we did go around let's try again there's a bit of a wobble at the moment because there's no mount one end. I've also tried uh, changing gear, which it seems better to do very easily, even with the uh, battery still connected up, which is handy. I'm only hoping it'll be that easy, obviously, when I've got a working gearbox. Seems to go in that gear very nicely. Anyway, at the moment, it's looking reasonably square. I've got to sort out the other mount, which I want to take off this one up here, which is the original um, alternator end, or number one piston end of the engine. So I'm going to take a mount off of there, come down to the side of the bottom plate. 
Um, a little bit disappointed about the gearbox, but not much I can do about it. I'm just going to plow ahead at the moment. But looking at as we are, um, I'm hoping that this alternator, if I decide to use it, will sort of go take up this space around here. Uh, but looking at the size of this space here, I can at least get one battery in here, maybe even two, and at least the same the other end. Uh, I'm be looking at using six 12 volt batteries at the moment to give me my 70 volts. Don't really want to put them all in the front here. I want to try and sort of um, share the space, share the weight around. So maybe, maybe three or four in the front and a couple in the back. Uh, one other thing I managed to get a hold of, which I'm trying to find at the moment. Got all the pipe work as I've shown you before for my vacuum system. Managed to get hold of this little beauty, which is basically just a, a cheap drinks canister for 2.99 out of Netto, or one of the uh, sort of cheap supermarket stores in England. So hopefully that's going to be my vacuum chamber, along with the pipe work I've got in here. I've got a heavy duty air reservoir and an old fire extinguisher here, which I was going to use, but that weighs about three times the amount of uh, weight of the of the little one, or the, the cheap one here, so obviously weight being a bit of an issue, so I decided to try and use the lightweight one and see how we get on. Uh, I'll be looking pretty soon to try and make a box for the vacuum pump um, and obviously looking at surrounding it in foam to try and keep the noise down and maybe a little set of rubber mounts to sort of try and hold it to try and stop any vibration at all. Um, most of the stuff's come out of the car now, as I said before, the exhaust fuel system's all off. Um, obviously clutch gas has got to come out yet. I haven't decided to take the dashboard apart yet. I thought, well, well I've got to do the heater, I might as well make the effort and do all the clocks that I'm going to be using, or the gauges. Uh, I'm looking at probably using a cheap set of ammeter and volt gauges, uh, the sort you can buy from a DIY shop, just to do testing in your house. So I'm hoping to be able to use something like that. Obviously, if you've got the right range on it, it'll be okay, and just melt them somewhere in the dashboard. And if it all goes well, maybe upgrade to something a bit more expensive later on. Um, been looking and chatting to somebody about batteries, um, what sort of type we're looking at. So I'll be looking around on YouTube pretty soon to get an idea what people have used. Only really looking to get out of six, as I said earlier on. Um, sounds like they're going to be going for about £100 each, which is obviously more than I wanted to pay. But there you go. I might have to do a bite the bullet. I might try testing out this system with some 36-volt batteries that I've got. But obviously, until I get the gearbox or that, it's not much sense in uh, trying to drive it anywhere. Uh, I'm looking at trying to get out of some sec second-hand car battery chargers, the like, some uh, places like Boots House, jumble sales and uh, maybe off the eBay and such like. I don't really want to pay sort of um, 40 or quid for each one of those. I'm going to go and try and go for something like an 8 amp charger, which obviously we're going to need for these sort of size batteries. Um, that's about it for now. I'm going to have a bit of a play around this weekend. It's uh, Friday the 10th of Ju July at the moment, by the way. So hopefully things are going to be crest okay. Um, hopefully I'll have my hands another gearbox pretty soon. It's a bit disappointing about this one, but there you go. What can we do? Uh, it'll probably teach me to chuck it around as much, but obviously it'll be a quick and easy change now that I've got this plate made up. Uh, as you probably heard, a bit of vibration on the plate. I'm only hoping it's going to be down to this, the fact we've got mo no mount this end. I've drilled the holes that you can see. is one obviously down here. We're mounting this yellow plate to the black plate uh, with quite a lot of space around it, so I can obviously um, jiggle it around and move it around. And it's presently packed out with washers between the yellow and black plate to bring up the two shafts between the gearbox and the motor in line. Obviously a bit more movement yet is available, but until I get the motor mount this end made up, obviously I can't confirm exactly what the problem is or not. That's it for now. I'll um, sign off now and see what this weekend brings and maybe do another video later on. Bye for now.